Thank you for listening to this webinar on temporary COVID first aid guidance and personal protective equipment, PPE, considerations for hikers and climbers. This webinar will last for approximately 15 minutes and the intended audience are on Mazama Mountaineering First Aid graduates or MFA and Mazama members who are Wilderness First Responders Certified or WOFERS. Go to the Mazama website for the latest COVID-19 updates, policy and guidelines. The goal of this webinar is to serve as a reminder of the need to practice safe for me and safe for you infectious disease precautions when providing first aid assistance in the backcountry. We will go through each of these topics in a little more depth. Recognize when and where infectious disease conditions may exist. Know and understand COVID signs and symptoms. Demonstrate understanding of appropriate backcountry social distance practices. Consider the pros and cons of different PPE types that are best suited in the backcountry. Understand how to properly assess COVID risk after obtaining consent. Apply strategies for where to carry PPE during a hike or climb. A little background on myself. I joined the Mazamas after BSEP in 2009. I completed MFA in 2015 and have been a skill checker for several years now and joined the MFA committee in 2018 after completing a wilderness first responder training. I feel that all of us have a superpower, which is a skill that can, can contribute to a successful climb. For me, what I offer a climb team is backcountry first aid experience. As a MFA or woofer, there is a responsibility to practice, train, and stay current for when and if the need for your superpower arises. There was a story several weeks ago of a Mazama on a gorge trail hike. Another climber stopped and asked if they had a Band-Aid. Always eager to help, the Mazama stopped and gleefully offered any number of Band-Aids, tape, blister pads, and first aid advice. The hiker took a Band-Aid and went on their way. As the Mazama put away their gear, they realized that they had not maintained a six foot separation, had not practiced any form of body substance isolation, and tried to recall if the hiker had exhibited any coronavirus symptoms. Was that sweat on their brow or was it a sign of a fever? These are the basic Center for Disease Control guidelines for infectious disease precautions. Wash your hands frequently with plenty of soap and water. Carry hand sanitizer in the backcountry. When using hand sanitizer, remember to scrub for at least 20 seconds. It is the vigorous scrubbing action that kills the virus, not just the alcohol. Practice safe respiratory hygiene by allowing appropriate cause and sneeze etiquette. Maintain a physical distance of at least six feet. Wear protective personal equipment or PPE as needed. A mask is a minimum. We will talk more about eye protection later in selecting appropriate backcountry PPE. This is a summary of Mazama Climb Committee policy for all Mazama Climbs. This is a very good set of practices and I will take a moment to review each. Team sizing. Smaller teams mean lower risk. Mazama policy limits climb teams to 10 individuals, but a climb leader should factor in the logistics of a climb and the practical nature of the routes chosen when considering a team size limit. The more complicated the climb and the more frequent close quarter environment, for example, small ledges, will result in a reduced team size. 
Gear sanitization. You should generally sanitize your equipment as best you can when you return home. For technical gear or gear that's hard to wipe down, it should be quarantined for 48 hours when you return home. Metal or hard surface gear can remain infected for up to seven days and is more concern. This applies to not sharing group gear for meals, drinking, etc. Carpool. Carpooling is highly discouraged for all Mazama programs. Avoid stopping for gas, food, snacks, and other supplies in communities outside of your own. Do not stop in gateway communities. Physical distance. Masks are required within six feet and hand sanitizer is required. Please be vigilant to use this equipment because it protects others from you. Masks should be at the ready while on the trail, climb route, or in camp for when you come in closer contact with other participants. Tent sharing. No tent sharing by individuals who do not live in the same household. Group etiquette. Be mindful of other people at the trailheads and on trails. Maintain physical distancing. Be polite and patient with others and do your best to keep your team from mixing with others. Don't gather for a post-climb dinner on the way home. We know this is a fun part of climbing, but it's not a good idea. We know this is a bummer. Now it's time for some homework. It is the time spent in preparation that leads to a successful venture in the backcountry. We spend hours agonizing over gear, route, and food decisions. Let's take a moment to consider additional PPE in light of COVID-19. These decisions are important when considering safe for me and safe for you. A mask is something worn by you to lessen the likely transmission of something infectious that you may be carrying to others. There was a recent university study where the published findings show the effectiveness of different masks in preventing the spread of aerosols associated with a typical cough. You can see from top to bottom the relative effectiveness of a bandana to a cloth mask to a pleated multi-layer heavy cloth. N95 respirators are not recommended in the backcountry. N95 are currently being reserved for medical and first responders. If you do choose to carry a N95, it is advised to get trained on the proper fit and storage and use. A N95, if improperly used, is ineffective. However, if a N95 is taken into the backcountry, a heavy cloth mask must be worn over the N95. Carry multiple pairs of gloves. I carry two pairs of my first aid kit that is at the top of my pack. I also carry one to two pair in a plastic Ziploc bag along with my mask on my hip. The reason for the Ziploc bag is for placing contaminated gloves and mask. Consider carrying a second mask for patients who do not have a mask and you are performing a patient assessment. Eye protection PPE. It is recommended to carry some form of face shield. Typical sunglasses will suffice. Glacier goggles with side shields are better and ski goggles are best. You will recognize many, if not most, of these COVID-19 symptoms. There is a lot that is known about the virus, but there is emerging information as well. It's important to properly assess COVID signs and symptoms. Let's review the medical side of the triangle patient assessment. Sample. Symptoms. Do you have any flu-like symptoms? cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, muscle body aches, headache, new loss of sense, smell, taste, sore throat, congestion, runny nose, nausea, vomit. Last input output, 
any diarrhea, events. Have you been in any close contact to someone who has been sick in the last two weeks? If yes, did that person test positive for COVID-19? OPQRST, onset, when did these symptoms start? Vitals, when checking SCTM, fever or chills? Let's review scene size up and consent considerations that you may experience during this time of heightened COVID-19 awareness. Scene size up is crucial. What is your first impression, injured or ill? Remember, you are number one, your safety is first. Put on your gloves. There is hesitation that we often observe during MFA scenarios with the donning of gloves. Students often ask if it is real world to put gloves on before approaching a potential patient. Doesn't the act of donning gloves make a potential patient nervous? Students would ask. Do it. Put on the gloves. Your friends and family will thank you later. At a minimum, use hand sanitizer if nothing else is available. When approaching, be observant for the obvious signs of COVID. Ask, how are you feeling? If you suspect the patient has COVID, ask them to don their mask or provide one yourself. Aren't you glad you brought that second mask? Get their consent. Verify a good airway and no difficulty of breathing. Remember to record the details of your thorough patient assessment on a SOAP note. If you are currently certified in CPR, it is strongly suggested that you contact your certifying agency to review their temporary COVID guidance of performing CPR along with the risk and temporary procedures to minimize COVID-19 exposure. Thank you for your time and attention to this webinar on temporary COVID first aid guidance and PPE considerations for hikers climbers. Go to www.mazamas.org for the latest guidance on COVID policies for Mazama hikes and climbs. Remember that the climbers and hikers on your team will be looking to you as a MFA grad and current woofer to be up to speed on what to do when dealing with a suspected COVID case. Taking the time now to prepare helps keep all of us safe. Thank you.